So, Fifth Canto Guru Maharaj, uh, chapter. Uh, mm, chapter five. Chapter five. Um, verse Guru Maharaj. And verse number. Two. Oh. Okay, I'll share. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'll turn it over to Hare Krishna. Okay. Om, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Mahatseva Dwara Mahor Vimuktes Tamo Dwaram Yoshitam Sanghi Sangam Mahatas Te Samachitta Prashanta Vimana Vasudam Saravo Ye One can attain the path of liberation from material bondage only by rendering service to highly advanced spiritual personalities. These personalities are impersonalists and devotees, whether one wants to merge into the Lord's existence, who wants to associate with the personality of Godhead, one should render service to the Mahatmas. For those who are not interested in such activities, who associate with people fond of women and sex, the path to hell is wide open. Mahatmas are equipoise. They do not see any difference between one living entity and another. They are very peaceful and fully engaged in devotional service. They are devoid of anger and they work for the benefit of everyone. They do not behave in any abominable way. Such person, people are known as Mahatma, Mahatmas. Purport. Human body is like a junction. One may either take the path of liberation or the path leading to a hellish condition. How can one take these paths as described herein? On the path of liberation, one associates with Mahatmas, and on the path of bondage, one associates with those attached to sense gratification and women. These are the two types of Mahatmas, the impersonalist and the devotee. Although their ultimate goal is different, the process of emancipation is almost the same. Both want eternal happiness. One should seek happiness. One should seek happiness in impersonal Brahma, and the other seeks happiness in association with the personality of Godhead. As described in this verse, Brahma Sokyam, Brahma means spiritual or eternal. Both the impersonalists and devotees seek eternal blissful life. In any case, it is advised that one become perfect. In other words, the Chaitanya Charitamrita Asat Sangha Tiyagi Vaishnava Char Sri Sangha Esad Asuru Krishna Bhakta R. To remain attached to the modes of material nature, one should avoid association with those who are Asat, materialistic. There are two kinds of materialists one who is attached to women and sense gratification, the other is simply a non devotee. On the positive side, is association with hot Mahatmas, and on the negative side, there, there is avoidance of non-devotees and woman hunters. Om again to Miranda Syagina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Mali Tamyana Tasmay Shri Gurvena Mahama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Kastaya Bhutale. Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. Namaste Saraswati Deve Go Ravani Bhatarine Nirase Sasunya Vari Pasyatya De Satarine. Vanchakopa Tarubhischa. 
Pipa Sindhu Pevatya Patita Ram Pavani Gyo Vaishnavi Gyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadad Har Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama And so, this verse is spoken by Sri Rishabde. This particular verse is very complete and powerful. The two types of great souls, those who are impersonalists and those who are devotees. And according to one's proclivities or direction in life, one may make advancement in one of these two paths. In other words, towards the impersonal realization of the absolute truth or towards the personal realization. In any case, one should seek association with devotees. Mm -hmm. Association is very fundamental in both establishing and developing one's the direction in spiritual life. Um, here we have, uh, as it's mentioned in the very end of the purport, Asat Sangati Age Vaishnava Achar, where it mentions that this is a, a verse spoken by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Srila Sanatana Goswami. And he gives him the directions that the first principle of spiritual development is to give up the association of uh, non devotees. Here, two types of non devotees are mentioned. Those are interested in association with the opposite sex for sense gratification, and those who are simply on the path of material progress. Both types of association is poison for one who is serious in executing the goal of life, uh, devotional service. So we will focus on, although both aspects are mentioned here um, of the absolute truth. The absolute truth is both impersonal and personal simultaneously. So we are personalists. We focus on developing relationships with Krishna as the personality of not him. Uh, and not the impersonal aspects. But both principles, as mentioned here, are the same, and that is association with great souls in both categories. So uh, in that association, one develops knowledge. One becomes somewhat detached from, from material sense gratification. And one learns the path how to to traverse the path of devotion towards the goal of devotion, which is Premupamartha Mahan, to develop love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But the appointed principle here is association, how important association is. Uh, the scriptures give very much uh, emphasis on this point throughout that uh, sometimes we use a little um, Terminology, we say, um, just tell me who you associate with and I'll tell you who you are, which means that association is very much uh, influential in developing and accordingly. So in Krishna consciousness, we want to associate in such a way that we make advancement than towards the goal of life. So for a devotee, he always seeks out the association of people who are more advanced and hears from them and renders devotional service to them. And that is the principle that governs the association. Not simply being in physical proximity. Physical proximity is not association necessarily. Although two people or two living entities might be together in one environment, very closely in that geographical space, it doesn't mean they're associating. Association merely means affection for. So we want to develop affection for 
Krishna's devotees who are uh, advanced in spiritual life. And we do that by observing their qualities and characteristics, which we are inspired also to develop. And that is also uh, necessary in order to develop these qualities and characteristics. Sometimes we hear, we hear also throughout the scriptures, that one should cultivate certain qualities which are foundational in the execution of devotional service, such as humility, tolerance, pridelessness, respect from others, developing uh, detachment from happiness and distress, uh, practicing simplicity, being very clean, both internally and externally, and uh, learning the truth and learning how to present the truth in a palatable way. These are some of the characteristics, and then some of the, there are more, many more of the qualities that are mentioned. So we see these qualities in great souls or advanced devotees, spiritual masters, or those who are pure devotees. And we look for the association. And in that association, we can observe these characteristics and also learn how to practice them. Uh, as they say, example, is higher than precept. Example can show exactly how things are meant to be developed. Precepts will give a little explanation of something, but when we see it in action or experience it personally, it becomes more and more easier or natural to imbibe such qualities. <laughs> Um, and we also understand that in association, we get to practice these qualities in such a way that they will develop, such as humility. In order to associate with devotees continually, one must develop this quality of humility. Otherwise, that association won't actually develop. What is humility? Humility means that one is in a position to render service, one is in a position to learn, uh, one is in a position not to present themselves as being uh, in any way recognizable. Humility is uh, one of the um, principal qualities that leads to higher knowledge. As Krishna explains in, um, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's mentioned that humility is one of the items of knowledge. Uh, so amanitvam means humility. So out of the 20 items of knowledge that Krishna mentions in the 13th chapter, I'm sorry, yeah, 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, he puts humility as first. Humility makes one sponge like. Uh, arrogance and uh, what we say, pride, uh, makes one uh, unable to understand and absorb anything. So sponge-like means something that can take in something naturally and easily. Well, that's um, one of the qualities of humility. And association with these great souls uh, helps one very much to develop this quality, along with other qualities and what are the other qualities we just mentioned. Qualities lead to characteristics Characteristics lead to certain skills and abilities, which uh, present themselves as, as active devotional service. In other words, one develops the mood of devotional service as one develops the qualities accordingly. One can practice the mood 
But when the qualities are there, the mood becomes natural and easily practicable or natural and easily executable. So one should practice these, these things, these qualities here. And one should carefully, as this boy verse mentions, avoid those who are not interested in spiritual life. Those who are very fond of creating more and more ways to enjoy sense gratification and look for the association of the opposite sex to fulfill their desires like that. Here he gives a very strong statement, those who are fond of enjoyment in the, with the opposite sex, um, the path to hell is wide open. In other words, this is the fast way to go down like that. And we see the whole world centers their activities around developing relationships with the opposite sex in different ways and to come up with more and more ways to enjoy in that association. <laughs> So therefore we see uh, we are in the midst of an environment that is simply contrary to spiritual qualities and characteristics. But one should definitely see and seek out and uh, become what we say enthusiastic for devotee association. That enthusiasm or that eagerness to associate with and serve devotees is so foundational in developing our Krishna consciousness that it's actually Krishna conscious itself, that eagerness. Um, we see that sometimes devotees will travel thousands of miles just to get the association of their spiritual master or travel thousands of miles to go to a particular event where there are many uh, saintly persons participating. So this is uh, a very laudable quality to be eager for. If we are very complacent and we take association with devotees very ordinary, or we don't look for opportunities to associate with devotees and execute devotional service in that association, we will not progress much in our devotional service. We will hardly progress at all. And we find this is the fast track to devotional service. That's why Rishabdev, he, he is the supreme personality of God. He's speaking this verse. This is spoken by the Lord himself in his, in, in his incarnation of Rishabdev. And he, he gives the, the clear understanding here that uh, you know once you one should be interested in and in eager to seek out such uh, personalities like that and um, to hear from them and then get all our questions asked and get all clarifications in our devotional life like that if we think we are okay in devotional service, we're doing all right, we'll find ourselves going, we'll becoming covered but more and more by the illusionary energy. A devotee always feels they have so much more to learn, so much more that they can engage in in order to move forward in devotional service. Devotee is always eager to advance. And advancement centers around sadhusanga. Sadhusanga is so important that Srila Prabhupada uh, quotes this verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sadhusanga, sadhusanga, sarva sastri hoi, lava matta, sadhusange, sarva city hoi. Uh, this verse is very fundamental. I believe it's spoken by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Krishna Das Kavi writes Goswami. I think he also uh, illustrates this particular verse. And what is he saying? That Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, uh, the association of the boy. What is it? Lava Matta. Lava Matta means one eleventh of a second. 
it's impossible for us to conceive how quick one eleventh of a second is. You would divide the, uh, a second into 11 parts. That speed of time, which is not even noticeable, is one eleventh of a second. So you might say it's instantaneous. And what does that mean? That one can become fully free from all sinful and materialistic reactions simply in that association immediately. But in order to qualify to the point of success, one has to continue to associate. One may think, well, I've had so much association with advanced devotees, and I can see that I'm not so advanced yet, and I still have so many material attachments. That is not the, the way to see things. What is the understanding is continue to associate. Continue to associate and look for opportunities for service. And by doing that, again, at one point in your spiritual progress, you will be completely cleansed of all material taints, material sufferings, material desires. Anything that is contrary to devotional service will be wiped away in that association. It's very powerful as long as we develop the right mood, and that mood is humility, of course. Mm -hmm. And eagerness to learn and eagerness to serve. We find ourselves in an environment now where association is coming through the computer, or that we call it the Vero media. But, um, and that is important, and that is also association, but it's not, complete. It's hard to render service in that environment. And also we find ourselves that we're in our own environment and we're not really in the atmosphere of many devotees. We somehow or other come by way of, and so it's not complete. And so one should not uh, simply be satisfied with that kind of association. One should look for association on the personal level by going to festivals, by going to temples, by creating associations in, one home, in homes, by having devotees come, just like we were experiencing for the month of Damodar, people would come together simply to uh, offer a, a lamp to uh, Sri Krishna in his form as Damodar. And many people would come together simply for the opportunity to associate and to chant the glories of the Lord and to offer this lamp. So that month was very, um, uh, very in influential in bringing about more and more types of association. But that should carry on continuously and we always should look for association. It's so important. And this is where we grow. And again, here, as Rishab Dave says, uh, only by rendering service to highly advanced personalities, one can reach the path of liberation from material bondage like that. And then he gives the qualities, they're peaceful. They don't see any difference between one living entity and another. Why? Because they see within the heart of all living entities, Krishna is there. And Krishna is equally disposed to all living entities. He does not favor one living entity over another. He simply reciprocates according to how they approach him, but he is equally opposed, equally disposed to all living entities. That is another quality of the great souls, Vidya Vinaya Sampane, Brahmani Gavi Hastani. Suni Chaiva Swapake Cha Pandita Samadarshana. Samadarshan means equal vision. Pandita, one who is great soul, sees with equal vision, not the body, but the, the soul within each and every living being. They are devoid of anger. Anger is a very uh, destructive quality. 
because it causes one to uh, act in a way that is contrary to everyone's benefit. And they work for the benefit of everyone. They don't simply are in con concerned with their own spiritual advancement. They're always working for the benefit of everyone. Their behavior is not is very is very uh, what's the word beyond uh, what is it beyond uh, beyond re reproach beyond reproach and they are known as great souls. So one should seek out that association like that and keep the, and it's not that you associate with great souls to find out, you know, what is the latest way you can, uh, you know, get a job or make money on the stock market or simply explain and talk about health. They associate in order to understand deeper and become get uh, clarification in the execution of their devotional service, get their questions asked, answer, and also get knowledge that will be relevant for their spiritual progress. So this verse is very, uh, uh, it's a main, it's one of the main verses in this in this particular chapter and it is uh, the uh, goal of those who are serious in Krishna consciousness sadhu sangha of great souls okay unfortunately there are many people who can fit in that category Okay, so we'll stop here and uh, we'll see if there's any questions or comments. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the very nice class on the association. Uh, uh, advancement centers around the um, Sadhu Sangha. It's very uh, important things for neophyte devotees like me to understand. So we always um, seek for association of uh, highly advanced spiritual personalities and render service to them and, uh, and uh, not to associate with the non-devotees, which you mentioned, like detaching from the material sense, um, gratification and omen hunters. And thank you for uh, um, mentioning the qualities um, to develop this humility, simplicity cleanliness, internal and external, learning the truth, respect to others, detachment from the sense gratification. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for the wonderful class. Um, dear devotees, uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, comments, or realizations, you can unmute yourself, or you can raise your hand, or you can type in the chat box. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Um, Maharaj, you spoke on how you know devotees must carry affection for Krishna's devotees when we enter the temple and we associate with our sadhu sangha. Um, but in my own experience, you know, um, I've had interactions with devotees where you know they may not seem as receptive. Um, for instance, just to give direct experience, yesterday I was visiting Gita Nagri and just, you know, casually was having a conversation, confiding with a devotee. But, you know, even the body language of this devotee, you know, their head was in the phone, looking down at this, you know, all over the place. It just didn't seem that the body language and the affection was really there. And I had that full attention and I, I left that situation feeling you know, sort of like, well, did this devotee give me their full attention? Was there affection there? You know, I constantly made eye contact. I, I did my best to engage. Um, so Maharaj, I just wanted to clear this ignorance. And, you know, is this me just 
you know, having a false ego of the situation, should I not? Well, to take your description as you give it, obviously that devotee wasn't in the right mood. Mm -hmm. So, but that doesn't nullify or change anything about the importance of devotee association. The devotee association centers around uh, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and engaging in devotional service. Our personal interaction on a one-to-one -one basis may take different ways, but generally those who are living at the temples should be very open and very accommodating to people who are visiting or who are coming for a particular class or particular reason. So taking what you say as face value, I could say that unfortunately, the, you were given what you were, should have been given in terms of how you should have been greeted. But that doesn't change any of the principles. It's just that somehow or other this person wasn't up to the standard. And uh, for whatever reason, maybe he had something else on his mind and, and he, he thought that was more important at the time. So uh, there's so many variables that could enter into this explanation. But generally, um, it seems like what you wanted to get and should have got came didn't, didn't happen because the person that you met was not ready for that. <laughs> But it doesn't mean we should be discouraged and uh, give up the idea for association. No, not, that doesn't dissuade me at all, Maharaj. It's just, you know, it, it, was a, it was an odd experience to have happen yesterday and then to have your mercy today with this class. And it is, it is a topic in our Sangha in Harrisburg that we talk about a lot. Um, you know, how, how to carry yourself amongst even, especially younger devotees and then newcomers who come to the temple, you know, you never know what sort of impression you're going to lay on them. Even if you're in a bad mood that day in the temple, you know, you might say one thing to a devotee and they, they might not have that means to confide um, with others to the degree that you may, and they'll let this negative interaction, you know, sort of simmer. And that's the thought I had, because when I left this interaction with this devotee, I was well, I was fine with it. You know, I, I didn't know what this devotee might have. You know, maybe he didn't want to make eye contact or wanted to be on the phone because he was busy and had a lot going on that day. Um, but we, but like I said, I just wanted to ask this question because we've had, you know, well, uh, one, of the ways, on one of the ways to that the temples should uh, receive guests is that in temples that are more developed and have more experience, they have people who are there simply to greet new people who come in, to welcome them, to make them feel, you know, uh, that we're happy you came, we'll do what we're doing, everything we can to uh, accommodate your needs and whatever it takes. And so um, I know certain temples that train devotees in uh, receiving guests, and it's a very important part of our Krishna conscious uh, temple life that we have trained people to receive guests. We had similar experiences when I was in New Vrindavan, we didn't have that. And when someone would come, uh, the devotees would scramble looking for someone to talk to them. Uh, sometimes a devotee would come out and try to do it himself, but he wasn't ready. He was in the middle of his own service. So that's just being unprepared from our side. You know, we should uh, be more ready and uh, equipped with the proper trained, and I use that word with emphasis, trained people to receive guests. It's not just like anybody can be there, and you know, and then and this, and then what will, what happens is what you experienced yesterday. You just happen to run into somebody who wasn't ready to receive anybody, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but that, that's not very, that's not Prabhupada's plan. Um, there's a whole manual, which I have, and it's uh, how to honor um, guests. And it, it's not just one page, it's about 100 pages of uh, how to, because it's actually a very um, essential point 
of our whole Krishna consciousness, how people have an experience when they first come to the temple. And that, that is, that, that, that could be the difference of that person becoming a devotee or becoming discouraged. So, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, our temples are not are training. They should be. And at least one or two people to be regularly ready to receive guests. Um, of course, sometimes now people think, well, because of the particular situation, not too many people are coming, but people are coming. <laughs> so we, there should be some uh, service in place. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that you weren't given the respect you and the... No, no it, it didn't bother my day at all, Maharaj. I kept moving forward. It just... It, if only it, it just helped me grow and helped me reflect and, as I said, bring it back home to our Saudi Sangha, confide in shikshas and, you know, you've been to Harrisburg, yeah. you've seen the size of our Sangha, so, you know, it's just, just we're all learning and how to grow and how to be a yeah, more but, welcoming community. Yeah, but then spend very new people will take it differently that this, this Hare Krishna group is not new interested in new people they don't know how to welcome you know they don't care i mean we've had experiences like that where people just don't come back <laughs> yeah so thank you for bringing it up because it's 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 necessary for the society to see how to welcome yes thank you Maharaj Hare krishna Thank you, Hare Krishna, Brent. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu, for the very nice question. Didi um, Mataji has uh, a question. Mataji, can go ahead. Thank you, Sudha. Thank you. Dear Raj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. So happy that you're so near and you'll be coming tomorrow. <laughs> Welcome back, Guru Maharaj. Everyone is eagerly waiting. Um, my question is about Mahatmas. Here, Rishabh Dev is describing even the impersonalists as Mahatmas. And then the yeah. they're devoid of anger, they're peaceful, they're equipoised. And uh, I mean, so many uh, good qualities are described. But, uh, are the impersonalists really engaged for the, and they work for the benefit of everyone? They are not engaged in devotional service. They're only interested in their own liberation. Is that right? Mm -hmm. What is this verse saying? Mm -hmm. the there's, two kind, there's two kinds of transcendentalists, the impersonalist and the personalist. They're both transcendentalists. And one is, one is shooting for the absolute truth in the impersonal way, and one is shooting for the absolute truth in the personal way. And the personal and the impersonal are two sides of the same aspect. Vedanti tas tat tat vidyam tat gyanam avyayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavaneti sabjate. The absolute truth is one, but it's divided in three aspects of itself. Impersonal, paramatma, and bhagavan. So there are yogis and transcendentalists in all three of those categories. And their goals are all the absolute truth. One is a partial understanding, one is a more complete, and one is the complete. But all are transcendentalists because they are working on the spiritual platform. Mm. But their goals are different, that's all. The goal is the absolute truth, but different aspects of the absolute truth. So those who are one, so one, one wants to enter into a house. So one wants to enter into the, the backyard of the house. One wants to go into the bathroom of the house and one wants to go into the living room of the house. It's, the house is the same, different aspects of the house. The absolute truth is, has three main aspects to it. And they're transcendentalists in all three categories as this first describes. And they can all be Mahatmas. Is that what is being explained here? Because they've taken up the process of self-realization, yeah. Hmm. 
does this description apply? They are very peaceful. They're fully engaged in devotional service. They're devoid of anger. They work for the benefit of everyone. They do not behave in any abominable way. This, this applies to all the categories of transcendentalists or only the Bhattas? To whatever degree they have realized the process that they're practicing, yeah. Mm. Even us, we're, on, we're, we're engaged, but we get angry sometimes. <laughs> We get lusty sometimes. We, we exhibit materialistic qualities. Doesn't mean we're not transcendentalists, but we're, we're still affected by it. So in the same way, each of the categories in the perfectional stage, this is versus really describing the perfectional stage of each of the categories and not simply those who are aspiring for the perfectional stage. Okay, thank you, thank you. That makes it a little more clear for me in my mind that all are on the path because they have taken up the process of spiritual life and to the degree they have realized these things, the qualities will manifest. Okay. Exactly. The same with us, same with devotees. Too. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji. Um... Uh, devotees, dear devotees, any more questions? Uh, please raise your hand and type in the chat box. Good, Maharaj. I don't see any questions. Can I ask questions? Um, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, Krishna Prema Devitasi Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Um, <laughs> Hare Krishna. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, um, I want to do if um, there is not enough association of equals and friends in Krishna consciousness. Uh, because sometimes I feel that it's even difficult to understand who is your equal. I mean, everyone seems uh, like <laughs> very advanced <laughs> so and what to do with this kind of association if um, for example I have the need to have friends and uh, for example oh. here yeah go ahead mm -hmm. um, and for example here in Croatia everyone is living so far away and there is only one way through internet um, <laughs> but really I feel that um, how to say it's not this association which can fulfill the heart all the time through internet. I saw you yesterday at the temple. Yeah. <laughs> you were there, you were associating. <laughs> right, so you might think, well, how often do you go to the temple? Yes. <laughs> Not very often. <laughs> oh, well, of course, I understand your particular situation is not so practical with with your with your new child. But at the same time, um, you can think. Well, from where Danov to what is it Danovar you live in? Danovar, <laughs> Danovar. Yeah, Danovar. To there to Zagreb is what one hour? Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. Oh, that's long. Yeah. Yeah. Well, try to come whenever you can, and uh, look for the opportunities when there is, you know, when the devotees are gathering for programs. But you can also call devotees to your place and have Sadhu Sangha there create a little program and have a little uh, namhat or even begin a, uh, a women's program there. That would be nice. So you may not be able to always easily go to the temple, but you know, make, make your home a place where people can gather more often have programs maybe once every two weeks or even if you can, once a week. 
and see how many people come. You get six, seven, eight people. That's nice. <laughs> Thank you. That's what we are thinking now about to create some space to have devotees, more guests. Yeah, maybe one guru also could come. <laughs> we would love to invite you, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Just give me a pair of overalls and a big set of boots and I'll be out there. <laughs> <laughs> so we are working on this question, how to arrange everything. Because we are far away and if devotees are coming, you know, we need to arrange place where to stay at least for a few days. Yeah, yeah. But, you, but you're in a situation where you could, you could build a house out there easy, right? So we are thinking about it, <laughs> how, how to do this. So. Yeah, you have a little ashram there. <laughs> it would be nice here. Yeah. Thank you for inspiration. Hare Krishna, thank you. Good to see you yesterday. <laughs> I was praying to Krishna to come to Zagreb to see you. <laughs> it was quick. Okay, Krishna Premi. Thank you, Mataji. Um, uh, Guru Maharaj, I don't see any questions um, in the chat box. Um, I have a question, Guru Maharaj. Can I ask? Um... Well, we give equal opportunity to everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um... So, uh, sorry, uh, my question is like, Guru Maharaj, like, uh, what is the difference between Mayavadis and impersonalists? I think a lot of times I have a still confusion. Mayavadis are envious of the Lord. They think that Maya is, um, the Maya is the principle that governs everything. In other words, Maya bodies, they think that Krishna's body is Maya. Mm -hmm. They think mm, everything is Maya. And the only one that is transcendental is the, is the soul. Mm -hmm. And the soul is also Maya until it reaches liberation. And so they're envious of the Lord. They don't render service to the Lord. They think themselves God, and they worship the spiritual master in order to become the, the spiritual master. They think Krishna's maya. They think all spiritual paraphernalia is also within the material energy. It's also maya. Maya bodies. The impersonalists, they are not envious of the Lord, mm -hmm. but they don't have complete understanding of the nature of the absolute truth in his personal form. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, um, we were just reading the verse 12. So, so they're, they're called Brahma bodies and Maya bodies. So, the impersonalists are called Brahma bodies, those who have re realized Brahman. And Mayavadis are those who are pretty much uh, deluded by the idea that all that all living entities are God and have fallen from this state of godlikeness, and now they're all under the influence of Maya. And liberation means to attain your godlike nature again. They don't make a difference between the soul and the super soul. They think the soul of super soul and the soul is one. There's no difference. Okay. There's a lot of uh, ignorance in the Maya body, but they are expert in philosophical explanations on the scriptures based on their own concocted theories. And they can take the scriptures and they can twist the 
the uh, meanings of the verses to suit their philosophical goals. Mm -hmm. Maya bodies are dangerous. Krish, Lord Chaitanya said, Maya body, Krishna aparadi. Maya bodies are offenders to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this verse, Guru Maharaj, so we should not associate with Maya bodies, but we can associate with Completely, 100%. It's like associating with a bad disease. <laughs> Too much, if you can associate with Maya bodies, you may also become like them. Mm. And it's difficult to, to actually, um, when we come across, like, you know. You should know the difference. That's why the Shastras are there. That's why the spiritual master is there. They give you the explanation. They give you the understanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Difficult. And easy is not a consideration in devotional So, What is difficult and what is easy? Everything is clarified by proper understanding and knowledge. And application also. The only difficulty is to realize Krishna. That's difficult. Yes, okay. Yes, good yeah. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you. I think we'll 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 end here because our hour has now reached the fruition part. Thank you very much. And tomorrow. Um, hopefully I'll be back in Slovenia at the five o'clock Slovenian time for tomorrow's class. I'm going to try to be there. I 95% chance I'll be there. Maybe 99. Okay. Thank you very bye much. Bye. Welcome back to the I'm not there yet, so hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Guru Bharat. Oh, yeah, there's so many variables in, in today's uh, particular lifestyle that anything can change. <laughs> okay, so we'll see you soon again on our discussion period. <laughs> I suggest that devotees read the books. Devotees are not asking enough questions. I see most people come and they just listen, and that's nice, and that's important. Devotees should be more active in listening to the classes and asking questions based on what they hear. We have a few devotees who are eager to ask questions, and most people remain silent, but we, need, we want devotees to speak up and Discuss, Bodhiantas Parasparam, to, to discuss this philosophical teachings will bring about realizations of the knowledge. We get it by discussing it. Okay, thank you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Vishwapavani, Radhavidonidi, Nitai, Nataraj, Nishringa Lila, Sri Devi Kalakanti. Who else do we have here? Malavananda Sachimata from Boston. And we have some ghost that just appeared. Oh, I'm so, oh no, no. Oh, that's, oh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> and Samadatri. Okay, Samadatri. She is the queen of the temple in, in uh, Slovenia. 
Without Sambhadatri, everything becomes difficult. We have Ivana, we have Manjuali, Namrata. Who else do we have? We have, yeah, so many nice devotees. Okay, chat the holy names and read Srila Prabhupada's books more and more. Thank you. Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories, Sambhaveda Lakta Vindaki Jai. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you, devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank you, Sudhakaji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.